I always use 14 point font for my scripts. That's just how I roll. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with hypocrites. On the one hand, they are hypocrites. But on the other hand, they provide me with the logical gymnastics to make videos like these from time to time. Free content. I'll take it. No. 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 <laughs> You have been warned. Let the demonetization process begin! So, what are we talking about? Well, it's an oldie, but to be quite frank, even more relevant now than it was in 2016, when it was cast into the cesspit void of the internet for all who reside there within thine hallowed halls. This graphic, this graphic right here highlights the effective difference in perception that the various pride movements operate under. You've probably seen it several times before. There are several reasons for why this is the way that people perceive, at least, the various pride movements, at least, white pride. In the United States, in its short, eclectic history, it has accumulated some not-so-great moments for itself on the pillar of history where we emphatically do not take the moral high ground. Oops. For instance, that little spat with the Native Americans way back in the day, um, slavery leaves quite a blemish on the record, don't you know? And uh, guys riding around in white hoods in the middle of the night certainly wasn't a glorious moment in our history, nor was it, I mean, of all the things, why white hoods? Why? And of course, who can forget about Japanese internment camps, guys. But that's just me glossing over a lot of the couple centuries history that we've been through thus far as a country. It's not nearly everything, but I'm not your history professor and I'm not going to give you everything. Sorry, because I have a point and only like 2,300 words to make it, so let's get cracking. It should be noted that this clash of the cultures, this is not something unique to the United States. For instance, Oliver Cromwell rounded up the Catholic Irish and shipped them off to the Caribbean to the island of Barbados and in, into indentured servitude back in the day. In the 1680s, the death of Charles II saw the rise in persecution of Presbyterians by the Episcopalians, often referred to as the killing time. But I'm not even talking about the English-speaking countries, oh no no. The Spanish Inquisition attempted to unify Spain under one religious rule and combat heresy lasting from about 1478 to 1834. In reality, however, it didn't really unify anyone. In its established tenure, the Spanish Inquisition was responsible for the deaths of 3,000 to 5,000 people, depending on your uh, source, the expulsion of a reported 40,000 Jews, and between 1560 and 1700 held a total of 49,092 trials. And then, while Germany was busy doing its Nazi thing during the Second World War and literally invading every other Central European country, at the same time invading Poland from the west, from the back door, the Soviets occupied Poland from the east and committed the Ketyan, Ket, Ketyan, 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 Ketyan massacre. <sighs> I never went to Polish school, mind you. It wasn't officially recognized, however, until 1992, but in 1940, more than 20,000 Polish prisoners of war were massacred by Russian forces. 77 years ago, people. I'll move on from specifically white offenders and head to Asia, specifically the conflict between Japanese invasion forces and Chinese residents during the Second Sino-Japanese War, often referred to as the Rape of Nanking, or the Nanking Massacre. Obviously, something with that name has to be a good time, right? For one side, sure. For the other side, not, not so much. Was that rape joke too forced? The Imperial Japanese Army swept through the region, both disarming combatants while raping and looting the civilians. Japan estimates a mortality rate of 200,000, while the Chinese officials, uh, they estimate their mortality rate at 300,000. Either way, that's a fucking high number. We can all agree. If that's not enough, let's look at something more contemporary for you, from a different part of the world. In Africa, of course, as of today in 2018, no less than 12 nations, including Chad, the Congo, 
Ethiopia, Ghana, Madagascar, Mali, and etc. partake in some form of slavery, including but not limited to forced labor, child slave trade, and ritual slavery. But if that's too recent for you, let's go all the way back to 1250 AD, where archaeological finds have determined that skeletal remains of Native Americans show signs of violence, scalping, and other mutilations, with particular attention to what is the present-day Dakotas. And I could go on, but I think I've established enough evidence to make the point that all of humanity, no matter the race, the creed, the religion, or perceived typical intelligence levels of any one group of people, is in fact capable of unspeakable horrors unto their fellow man, and has been the cause of unspeakable horrors unto their fellow man for <sighs> fucking long ass time, bitches. Does that mean that the non-participants of those unspeakable horrors, such as myself, who are completely innocent of slavery and genocide and massacres and rape and every other evil, horrible thing you can think of, but who share certain traits with the act's perpetrators, such as skin tone, religion, etc. Are they also to blame? No, of course not, that's fucking silly, right? But it does beg this question. If we are not meant to feel guilty about other people's fuck-ups in the past, are we then meant to feel prideful about historical successes as well of these people? I say not, but that's a matter for later. Let's return to this graphic because it's important and I have things to say. So, how do you defend this? Well, we're going to look at two responses I could find on the internet that attempted to explain the doubled standard and why it might be a legitimate one. Because black equals African culture and heritage. Mexican equals Mexican culture and heritage. Asian equals Asian culture and heritage. Muslim, religious culture and heritage. White, proud of skin tone. You can have Italian pride, Irish pride, German pride, Russian pride, Scottish pride, Australian pride, and Spanish pride. In fact, we even have parades celebrating Italian, Irish, German pride. Nobody says any of that is racist because it celebrates culture and heritage. Saying white pride is just being proud of your skin tone. It is not a celebration of culture and heritage. It's being proud you aren't black or brown. Do you see the difference? Here's the explanation you've all been waiting for. The question was, why is white pride racist? Now, kids, did you notice something? About those initial specifications? I'll bring them back up for you so you can see them. Of the five various pride movements specified in this graphic, three, not one of them, but three of them have to do with a race, which the author has so curiously attempted to hide. I'm sorry, but you cannot dispute that black is a race, that Asian is a race. That is a fact. White is also a race. This is also a fact. I'm sorry to dumb it down for you, but we have to play it stupid because, let's be honest, this is stupid. It's curious that the author, however, saw fit to distinguish white from the other four pride options by highlighting Italian and Irish and German cultures, but neglected that same strategy with regards to both Asian and black heritage. Because you see, if I took just one of those cultures and heritages as the author so specifies, you'd find a vast array of cultures and heritages within them too, now wouldn't you? For example, within Asia, there's upwards of 55 different countries, several different languages, which is an understatement. I mean, even within China, there are more than 200 different dialects for Chinese. Not to mention, you have Indians in Asia who are rather darker than what I imagine is what fits your schema of what an Asian is. And then there's Russians who are probably too white to also fit that same mold, if I'm not mistaken. So it's entirely disingenuous, if not rather insulting for anyone to even insinuate that Asia is one single heritage and culture. And you know, I'm gonna hit on this point. If you ask the Chinese and a Japanese person how they felt about each other respectively, you might find yourself in for shock if you adhere to this logic. Considering what I talked about earlier in this video with like the rape of Nanking and such. You didn't think this through, did you? <laughs> On to the next graphic, I'm not done yet. A common and seemingly reasonable argument for white pride or white nationalism is why can't I be proud of my culture? Well, you can. 
always have been able to. We have Irish pride celebrations, we have German drinking festivals, we have Serbian food festivals. Any European culture you can think of has multiple organizations in North America dedicated to taking pride in their heritage, and no one gives them shit for it. And don't you think other cultures have these as well? I've been to ramen festivals meant to celebrate Japanese culture. New Orleans hosts it a yearly weekend celebration of voodoo music and art, a religious cousin to the West African Dahomeyan Vudan. Forgive me if I butchered that. <laughs> also, there's the festival Sudinyata. Again, forgive me if I butchered that. The Black Arts Festival is a celebration in honor of Sudinyata Keta, the historic and legendary king of kings of the Mali Empire in West Africa. So... <laughs> Maybe you didn't look hard enough. But you see, when you start talking white pride, that's not a culture, that's a skin color. There is no white culture, there never was. There is no pan-European culture, never was. Europe is a continent, not a culture or ethnicity. Careful now, fam, your hypocrisy is showing. And just like that, you've undone yourself. There is no black culture, there never was. There is no pan-African culture, never was. Africa is a continent, not a culture or ethnicity. Do you do you, do you see how easy it is to combat your logic with your own logic? Now, some of you are probably about to go, but wait, Black Pride, how is that okay? Well, easy. Go find a black person and ask them if their ancestors were slaves. When you find one who says yes, proceed to ask them, what country in Africa were your ancestors from? Do you know what their answer will probably be? I don't know. So if I were to grant you that, not that I am, but if I were to, that doesn't explain why Asian pride is okay or Hispanic pride is okay. Just black pride. But I have other things. So probably, probably, probably. Okay, so a bit about me guys. I can tell you where my family came from before they came to America, on my father's side at least. It was Poland for the most part. However, even though we've been here less than 100 years, none of us can speak a lick of Polish. None of us have ever been to a Polish festival, as far as I know, in my 20 years of life. And the most Polish thing I've ever done is drink vodka and eat a stuffed cabbage roll. And then, it's gonna shock you, but on my mother's side, oh boy, that's a doozy. You see, she was adopted. So I am, in that sense, on the same level as the heritage-less black Americans. But even with a semblance of knowledge of a culture I'm vaguely connected to, do you know what that connection means that I know nothing about? Jack shit. Because everyone who would have cared, who would have remembered our Slavic motherland is dead. And with them, any longing for a culture on a different continent. I am aware that my experience is not universal. But it is something to consider. But more than that, more than that, you want to know something else? I couldn't give you any idea of where my family emigrated from before they settled in Poland. There's nothing. No carryover. No memory. Nada. It's, it's been forgotten. But does that lack of knowledge make it okay for my great-grandparents to express their white pride because they can't remember where they came from? The logic doesn't fly, does it? Probably. This is because their culture was taken from them. It was beaten out of them. They were enslaved, Christianized, and then whitewashed. The one unifying feature they have as a people is that history of slavery and the history of being black. They can't have Liberian pride or Congolese pride or insert African country pride because they have no fucking idea where their ancestors came from other than the broad region of West Africa. But even then, even if we can't sign individual unfortunate black descendants of slavery, a specific country to be prideful in, there are so many different ways that black people have, have, have redefined their own identity in America that isn't the slightest bit universal. I mean, there are Muslim black people, there are Christian black people, there are Jewish black people, <laughs> a few other religions too. There are ghetto black people and affluent black people and middle class black people. And then there are different dialects that have formed as a result of hardship of black Americans during, you know, their hardship time periods. For instance, Creole and Gula and Ave? Eve. Double A V E. Anyway. To blanket all that variance under the umbrella of Black pride doesn't seem right to me. It doesn't seem fair to all of these subcultures that are completely different from each other. 
Now, I get what you're trying to do, and it comes from a good place, but you're lumping all black Americans together, and that's how you end up with stereotypes and misconceptions that don't quite fit everybody, that probably barely fit everybody, <laughs> that leave some things to be desired. People get muddled together, making them indistinguishable from each other when in fact they shouldn't be indistinguishable. To perpetuate that seems rather ignorant, don't you agree? Meanwhile, us white people can often trace our ancestors to specific cities and regions. I can trace my mother's maiden name to a single fucking village in Ireland. I know where I came from. I don't have a white culture. I have Irish culture. You keep using words like often and probably to make your arguments and that, to me, doesn't give me a lot of confidence in your position. So that's why white pride makes you an asshole, but black pride actually makes sense. I hear what you're trying to say, but hear me out. Here's the thing. No, it doesn't. Now, if you like what I'm doing here, you can check out the links in the description to my Amazon, Patreon, and Teespring. If you maybe don't like me that much, that's totally cool. You can always like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also, don't forget to hit that bell so you actually get notified because YouTube hates everybody. <laughs> Finally, if you want to see more of me, maybe not within the video capacity, I do do an RPG-esque stream show every Monday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Magog of Morskar's channel. And also, I bet you didn't know this, but I also do a bi-weekly stream about the news, advice, and the going-ons, and more. Sundays, Wednesdays, at 7.30 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Some Dumb Americans' channel. Links to both of their channels in the description down below. Peace, bitches. Thank you.